Hello YouTube, D Bodger here. In my last video, I showed off this uh, grinder attachment, you know, tool post grinder, uh, that I have just finished. And in this video, I want to show off something else. So, uh, with just a tool post grinder, there's not a lot you can do uh, without being able to fix the angle of rotation uh, that the uh, chuck makes. So, you know, right now it's spinning free. You know, turn it on. So that's that's fine for spinning stuff in here, uh, you know, at a relatively high speed. But with something like this, you need to be able to set a specific location on something that's cylindrical and then be able to lock it there and then to be able to cut the part. I have seen a variety of ways of doing that. Uh, some people will use like a uh, a degree wheel for for like a timing for an engine uh, and then they'll put like some kind of a clamping assembly on the uh, on the chuck plate or whatever to lock things in place. Um, I didn't like any of those solutions and the reason why I didn't is because well I thought I could do better <laughs> and so I have and that's what I want to show you today so this is my little machine shop uh, 80 by tw or 8 by 20 uh, model 7500 uh, mini lathe so here is what it is so this is uh, a rotary table that I bought on eBay I think it was for 140 bucks uh, I didn't go for the cheapest one. I didn't go for the most expensive one. I wanted something that was going to work pretty well and not cost me a fortune. So 140 bucks was in my budget, so that's what got bought. Uh, this is an ER32 uh, collet that you mount on the uh, chuck plate for your lathe. And conveniently, it had the three-bolt pattern in it, and the rotary table had, had three T-slots in it. So I had to make some T-slots or some T-nuts rather, and you know, just use some uh, M8 bolts to bolt that on. Otherwise, it was a perfect fit. Uh, getting it centered was a little bit of a hassle, but that was no big deal. Uh, not really. Uh, so anyway, the ER32 collet is kind of my clutch, if you will. Uh, basically what it does is it clamps on a shaft that goes from here to about here inside the spindle bore of the lathe. And uh, that, uh, that piece there, right there is a piece of a stainless steel thick wall pipe. And I picked that on purpose because I needed to put a bolt through it. So there is a long piece of bolt that I made that uh, it's got threads on both ends of it. Uh, I forget what I used, M8 I think. And one end is here and the other end is over here. Anyway, this end over here, uh, there is a cone-shaped nut that uh, fits into the end of the piece of stainless steel pipe which has got a cut in it and when I tighten this nut which I had to make over here uh, then it pulls that bolt this way and it flares the end of that piece of pipe and locks it into the spindle bore. So getting that in and out is really easy. All I have to do is loosen this nut right here tap on it a couple times pretty easy and the whole thing just pops that way it takes all the pressure back off and that whole entire inner piece comes right out so piece of cake uh, not that I need to and the reason why is because of this so this ER32 collet like right now it's loose chuck totally spins and all I have to do over here tighten that bad boy up there we go, that's just locked in, and now the chuck doesn't move. So that's all it takes, is just simply loosen this ER32 collet, or tighten it, and the, the chuck is locked to the rotary table. And now, this is what I really like about it. Um, what degree of movement do I want? So you can see the, the uh, chuck back there, and I'm just going to turn this handle. So you can see the... Uh, the chuck turning, let me hold that still. Yeah, you can see the chuck turning, and it's because I'm turning the handle. And, you know, between the little one degree uh, dial on here and then the tenths of degrees up here, I can dial in any specific 
angle of rotation I want on the spindle, I, aka the chuck, and is locked. Because, you know, go back over here and see it, it doesn't move. I'm trying to turn it, it doesn't go. <laughs> it's because it's all locked together all the way to the rotary table. So this is super nice. I love this. Uh, this is much better than any other solution I've seen online for, you know, specific degrees of rotation uh, on, on your uh, on your entire assembly all the way through to the chuck because uh, I've got much better control than I've seen anything else. Uh, this little bracket right here, that's just uh, a light angle aluminum, nothing really special there. Underneath the door here, I've added a piece of 10 millimeter thick 6061 aluminum plate. And, uh, and then the, uh, the whole entire side cabinet was bolted to the casting for the spindle or whatever you call that whole thingy in the middle there. Uh, it was bolted on by 6M6 screws, so I reused those exact same holes and made myself standoffs that would then meet up to the inside of the uh, aluminum so that all the stuff could get locked together. So now there's four screws, and this is M6 again, pulling the door in. Not that I really had to pull it in, because it's like the, those standoffs are exactly the right length needed to make the door just close right up and be a perfect fit. So there's one here, can't see the other ones um, because they're here and here, up underneath there. And then here's another one right here, right underneath one of my screws. Uh, and then of course the, uh, the rotary table is bolted to aluminum in several places by a bunch of M5 screws. So if I want to take the thing apart, it actually comes off really easy. All I have to do is take off those M5 screws, loosen that, ER32 call it right there, and then the rotary table slides right off. Then if I want to go even further, like, you know, pull out this long bolt out of the spindle bore, again, it's super easy. All I have to do is loosen that nut right there, tap on it a couple times so that the, uh, the cone nut back here releases, and then that whole, that whole piece comes right out. And after that, then I have access to inside. So it takes a little bit more time to get inside this cabinet than it used to, but I would have to say it's not that bad. It's, it's not like it takes me an hour to get inside. It really only takes me about five or six minutes to pull this stuff off so I can get inside the cabinet. And the real reason why I would do that is because I want to mess with the change gears because I want to do threading or something. Otherwise, 90% of the time, you know, if I'm not threading, I don't care. But this is absolutely brilliant. So, you know, here it is. It's locked down. You can see it rotating. And that's just from me turning the handle. And then when I want to have it loose, so I can just do normal lathe work, loosen that up, uh, turn it until the uh, ear 32 collet releases. So there you go, just released our little clunk, and now this is totally free. So this is kind of like my clutch or engagement mechanism. <laughs> works brilliantly. Uh, I'm absolutely thrilled to death with this. That works exactly how I wanted it to do. Um, perfect, just absolutely perfect. Uh, you know, I had to do some work to make that work, you know, make this more rigid, things like that, but that was not really that hard to do. Most anybody with some basic machining skills, a drill, things like that, they should be able to do all this stuff. You know, uh, use some countersinking or counter bore, whatever you call those things, to uh, inset my, uh, my screws, but that's the worst of it. Nothing, nothing here was hard to do. Uh, I would say that this was probably harder to do just because it... You know, it's got some odd angles and things like that in it, but this was this was pretty easy to do, and it works absolutely brilliant. Like, can't can't complain about it in any way. It's been on the lathe for I don't know about a month, and uh, for the most part, it's just sat there because I didn't have the grinder built yet until just earlier today. So it's just been sitting there, not being used until tonight, and it has. This is the first thing I've made with it. So this was the fixture for making that nut. And just unscrew it around with a four millimeter and of course that two millimeter mill in there. This is what I made with it. And that all happened thanks to the rotary table. So it turned out pretty cool. I mean, you know, I've got this little U-type feature in here that goes around those other thingies. <laughs> And they're every 60 degrees and you know with a gap in between. So yeah, that wouldn't have happened without the rotary table. 
And it would, certainly wouldn't have happened without the grinder in the picture too. I needed both. And now I can do a lot of other things. For example, uh, I have some projects that I want to do... <sighs> Boy, <laughs> like making uh, keyways in motor shafts or uh, milling slots in things. Um, you know, elongated slots. So like I'll have a flat piece in here and mill a long slot in it across the face of whatever. Uh, I do a lot of spot welding for battery packs. And I want to be able to make myself some water-cooled spot welding pens because they get so damn hot. <laughs> and so I'm going to use some copper and put that in here. And then I'm going to use the grinder and the rotary table to machine some slots in it. And that is going to be a, a water passageway so that I can water cool some uh, spot welding pens that I'll have to make myself. And that'll all get done right here on the lathe with the grinder and the rotary table. Anyway, this was proof of concept. I can cut a channel around some feature at a very fixed depth with a very great deal of control and I need that exactly to do those uh, weld pens. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this whole thing. That's super cool.